الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى سبحان الله وبحمده عذل خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد في الأولين والآكرين وفي الملأ العلاء إلى يوم الدين اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وعود بك من وساوس الصدر وشتات الأمر وفتنة القبر اللهم إني أعود بك من وساوس الصدر وشتات الأمر اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وعود بك من وسوسة الصدر وشتات الأمر وفتنة القبر أما بعد حسرين كرام Honorable Assembly Today is the day of Jumu'ah. Today is Friday, and some people call it Good Friday. Well, actually, all the Fridays are good. In fact, Friday, the day of Jumu'ah, is the best of all the days. It is more excellent. It is superior even to Eid al-Fitr. The day of Jumu'ah is even superior to Eid al-Adha. It is even superior to the day of Arafah. The day of Jumu'ah is so superior to all these great days. But we take Jumu'ah for granted. We just take it to be that is we undervalue it. We do not show appreciation for this day of Juma. We take it for granted. Lack of appreciation. And it just becomes like routine. It is understood that, well, yesterday is the day of Juma. That's something understood in our minds. Ya Rab, Ya Rab. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about the day of Juma. He said it is Sayyidul Ayyam. It is the head. It is the chief. It is the Sardar of all the days. The day of Jummah is the, the Sayyid, the master, the best, the chief of all the days. And when we, as we come into the masjid on the day of Jummah, there are angels by the doors and they write down the names. Al awwal fal awwal, those who come first and those who come after. Those who come very early, they get the reward of sacrificing a camel. 
Then those who come after for sacrificing a bull, then a sheep, then a chicken, and then an egg. And there are many people who get eggs all the time. But at least they still get something. And then there are those who come in when the kutbah starts on the member, so they get nothing because the angels, they close their books and they come and they listen to the kutbah. So today is the day of Juma. It is, it says Eid for us. Eid. But you know what is real Eid? What is the real Eid? Eid is a time when Muslims are very happy. And very soon we are going to be experiencing, inshallah, the month of Ram Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ba'an. Waballigna Ramadan. Ramadan is coming very quickly. It's one month away. We're going to experience Eid al Fitr. And people will be with joyous faces and with happy spirits. And indeed, we should be. But today, I want to tell you what is the true Eid. Because Eid is about a feeling of happiness. Eid al Fitri, Yawm al Birri, the day of Eid is the day of goodness, a day of righteousness, a day of happiness. But let's go a bit deeper. What makes you feel good? Because Eid is about feeling good. And when someone likes you, I remember Hafiz Patel Sahib, our beloved Hafiz Patel Sahib. When he would see someone whose countenance appears beautiful to him, when he would see someone whom he likes, he would say, Wow, you look like the Eid. You look like the Chand of Shawwal. Eid Kachan. You look like the moon of Eid. But what is our real enjoyment and what is our real Eid, it is within. And today I will share with you something which is written in the book Ikmal Washiyam, the original book, Al Hikam, and then we had Abwab al Hikam, and then Ikmal Washiyam was by the great scholar of Islam from Spain, from Alexandria. That great Sheikh, that great Wali of Allah, Sheikh Ibn Atha'illah al Iskandari. One of the chapters, because the book was Al Hikam, then it became into the form of Abwab, and then commentary was done by Hazrat Abdullah. But it is mentioned there. That Al Eid Al Fakru Eid Al Muridin Al Fakru Eid Al Mu'minin. That Fakr. We know one one meaning of Fakr is poverty, and from Fakr we get the Fukara, Fakir, Fukara, poor people. Who are poor people? They are people who are dependent upon others. So the root, al-fakr, means dependence. It means to be in need. And it is mentioned that al-fakr, the quality of fakr, the quality of poverty, the quality of being in need, Eid al-muridin is the Eid and the joy of the murids. The joy and the Eid of the believers. We need to elaborate. Ya Rabb. We need to elaborate. Before we elaborate, let me tell you a story about what is real Eid and peace and inner contentment. We have heard from our Mashaikh, from the the silsila, the chain, the sanad of silsila, tasawwuf, 
tazkiyah, which goes back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our silsila, there is a great personality, there is a great name that is present in the silsila. He was a great personality by the name of Sheikh Ibrahim ibn Adham. Alayhi rahma. And some of you might know about him, Sheikh Ibrahim ibn Adham. And his story is amazing. He has an amazing story how he got wilayat, how he got sainthood, how he became one of the friends of Allah. He was on a ship traveling and the waters became rough, violent, stormy waters. And everyone on the ship was scared, agitated, but he was lying on his mat comfortably without any worry. And someone said to Ibrahim ibn Adham, how can you be so relaxed? Can't you see what's happening? Danger. We are in the middle of the ocean. How can you be so relaxed? Sheikh Ibrahim ibn Adham rahma said, Come, let me tell you when I am scared. I become scared. I become agitated. I become afraid when I disobey Allah. When I sin, that is the time I become scared because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. Subhanam an yarani. Subhanam an ansahu wa la yansani. Allahu hadiri, Allahu nadiri, Allahu ma'i. So when I am out of the obedience of Allah, if I become in haram, ma'ad Allah, and I am disobedient, that is the time I become scared because I am afraid of the ghadab and the wrath of Allah. But if I am in line with the orders of Allah and I am obedient, I have nothing to worry for he is the master. He is the master of the oceans. He is the master of the heavens and the earth. So I am not worried. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved his statement very, very much that immediately the waters became calm and tranquil because Allah loved his statement. This shows us where true contentment really lies. It is within. That is his Eid. And you don't have to wait for the day of Juma to experience Eid because Juma is our Eid. It's an Eid every Friday. It's a double Eid because the day of Arafah when the verse was revealed, al Akmaltu Lakum was also on the day of Juma. So Juma is double Eid. But we don't have to wait for those days to get that sweet feeling of Eid. We can experience it every day. He was experiencing that sweetness, that joy, that happiness. As long as he is following the commands of Allah, as long as he, he is in the obedience of Allah, he has nothing to worry about. The master of the heavens and the earth and the oceans. Allah loved his statement so much that the waters became calm. But you know, as I let, on the same note, or on the opposite side of the coin, sometimes we say something and Allah doesn't like it. So there was another great saint who is also written in our silsila going back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this sheikh, he was sheikh ibn al-Arabi. Ibn al-Arabi. He was also on the ocean traveling aboard a ship similar conditions, stormy waters, heavy, violent, the winds, the riyah, 
wind after wind. Everyone is scared. Everyone is scared. But he, Sheikh, Sheikh Ibn al-Arabi, a great saint from Spain, he said to the ocean, he said, O skun ayyuhal bahru, fa inna alayka bahra. That O ocean, become calm and tranquil, because upon you is another ocean, referring to himself as an ocean of knowledge. And indeed, Sheikh Ibn al-Arabi was an ocean of knowledge. So he addressed the sea and said, Uskun ayyuhal bahru, O sea, O ocean, become calm, fa inna alayka bahra, because another ocean is upon you. A huge great fish appeared and came to the side of the boat and raised its head up, very huge big fish, and said, Wow, you're an ocean of knowledge. Answer me one question. What if a woman's husband has become mutated, musk, transformed, like how the people in the time of David, people in the time of the prophet Dawood, alayhi salatu wasalam, became transformed into apes, into monkeys. Like how the people in the time of Jesus, Isa ibn Maryam, became transformed into pigs and to swines when they ate of the table spread and they did not show shukr and gratitude and, didn't, and disobeyed. That's called musk mutation. So the fish said, O ocean of knowledge, huge big fish, answer me this question. If a woman's husband becomes mutated, then what happens to that nikah? What happens to that marriage? And what? Does she become divorced? Is, does, she, does she become divorced from him? And then if she is divorced from him, what is the idda? What is her idda and her waiting period? And he could not answer that. He could not answer that. So when our sheikh, our mentor, Hazrat Maulana Yusuf Mutala was mentioned in the story, and he wrote it in his book, Jamali Muhammadi, one of the students asked, they say, Hazrat, so what's the answer? So he said, well, if an ocean of knowledge couldn't answer it, you want me to answer it? I quiet, just get quiet. An ocean of knowledge couldn't answer it, you want me to answer it? So sometimes we say something and Allah loves it very much. And sometimes we say something and Allah doesn't like it. So Ibrahim ibn Adham, he was at, he was at peace with himself. He was comfortable because he's enjoying the sweetness of obedience. So back to the statement now. This is as a muqaddama, an introduction. The Sheikh is mentioning in Iqmal al-Shiyam that al-faqru, poverty, want, need. Eid al muridin is the Eid of the murids. It is the Eid of the believers. What does this statement mean? It means that when we get the reality of the ayat of Quran, when we get the reality of the ayat of the Quran, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhannas, Allah is saying, O people, O people, whom is Allah addressing? The black, the white, the brown, the yellow, He's addressing, addressing those who are handsome, those who are ugly, those who are young, those who are elderly. He's addressing those who are wealthy, billionaires, like the Sultan of Brunei, like Mr. Donald Trump. 
like the kings of Saudi Arabia, the princes, the king and all the previous kings, the emperors, the princesses. He's addressing the prince and the pauper. He's addressing everybody. Go beyond that now. Allah is even addressing the ulama, Muslims, non-Muslims, those who are the hufaz, those who are the qurra, those who are the alims and the ulama. He's addressing the mashayikh, the muhaddisin, the mufassirin. He's addressing the awliya, the friends of Allah. He is even addressing the prophets, al-anbiya, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he's even addressing the rusul, the messengers, everybody included, no exclusion. Allah, the master of the heavens and the universe, the controller, the master of the heavens and the earth, the controller of the universe is addressing everyone in this ayat. And this is the reality. He says, Ya ayyuhannas, that all people, antumul fuqara'u ilallah, that you are all fuqara, you are all poor people. You are all people that are dependent, that are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you be rich, whether you be poor, whether you be a prince or a pauper or a king or a wali, an alim, even a prophet, even a messenger, everyone. This is the Lord of the worlds who is speaking. This is Kalamullah. Final revelation, the words of Allah. Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, antumul fuqara'u ilallah. You are al fuqara. You are people who are poor and dependent and in need of Allah despite what you have. Wallahu al ghaniyul hamid. And Allah is the one who is rich. Allah is the one who is praiseworthy. When the reality of this verse comes in, this is our Eid. This is our festive occasion. This is the time of our happiness. And we feel a joy inside that we learn to become dependent upon Allah. That we learn that we are in need of Allah. How many a difficult situation comes our way. There is no way out. There seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel. There seems to be no open door. How hard it is. How difficult it is. Whom do we turn to? We are in need. We are fuqara. We are dependent. Who can solve that? Our Nabi, the prince of both the worlds, the beloved of Allah, the imam and the chief of all the prophets and the best of mankind, the jewel of mankind. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to pray because he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that we would face hard times. This life will never go the way that we want it to go. This life is not about fulfillment of desires. Sometimes we get what we want. Sometimes we don't get what we want. So he knew that we would be faced with problems. So he taught us a dua, which is found in Al Hizbul Azam. He taught us the dua to say, Allahumma al bina, O my master, O Allah, the master of the universe, heavens and the earth. The one who is always present. The one who has power and kudrat over everything. Allahumma al-tuf bina. Oh Allah, please. Deal with us kindly. 
In making every difficulty easy, please be kind to us. Display the act of softness and leniency and kindness towards us. In making everything easy. Because the making easy of every difficult thing is very easy upon you. That's so easy upon you. So please make my difficulty vanish and make my difficult tax become easy. Taught us that. That is al-faqr. Dependence upon Allah. Dependence upon Allah. Of the 99 names of Allah, one of the names of Allah is As-Samad. As-Samad. Qul Allah. Say, what is the matter? What is the, what is the affair? Allah is As-Samad. Qul Allah Ahad. Allahu samad Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. Say that Allah is one. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad Say that Allah is a samad. And what is samad? In Urdu they say samad is beniyaz. In Arabic samad is gayru muhtaj. Ila ahadin wa ila ayyi shay'in. Samad, Samad, Ya Samadu, Ya Samadu, Ya Samad. Samad is one of the names of Allah, which means that Allah is totally, absolutely independent of anyone and of anything. Beniyaz, Gairu Muhtaj, is not in need of anything. That's the being that is not in need. We are in need. Despite the millions that we have, despite the billions that we have, Despite being princes and kings and emperors, despite being a prophet and a bee, despite being even the best of mankind, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is even included in this ayah. Prophet Abraham, Ibrahim, Prophet Jesus, Isa, they all included in this ayah. Everybody, Antumul Fuqara ilallah. You are in need of Allah. You are in dependency upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallah and Allah, who al al Hamid, He is the one who is rich. He is the one who is praiseworthy. So when a problem comes, if we can learn to practice a sunnah, when a problem comes, to make wudu, drop the musalla on the ground and perform two rakats, salatul haja, and raise our hands in dua and beg Allah and say, oh Allah, I am a fakir. Allah, oh Allah, I am poor. I am in need. I am, I am dependent upon you. We, you are the only independent person. We are all dependents. And raise our hands. And especially, especially when the world is asleep. Qiyamul Layl. Break of dawn is about 4.45 now. If we wake up in the morning, half three, quarter to four. When the world is asleep and we make our wudu and we put forth our case before Allah. And cry out unto Allah. When this quality begins to come within us, then there's going to be a sweetness and a joy. I'm not saying that, that life is going to be a bed of roses. Of course, we're going to be tried. We're going to be tested. Sometimes we're going to be sad, and sometimes we're going to be glad. Sometimes we're going to be up. Sometimes we're going to be down. We are human beings after all. And you know what? Sometimes we even feel weak too. But we should not lose hope. So when a person gets this quality that why should I stretch my hands before 
makhluk and creation. I am the one that I am stretching my hand towards. He is the sultan. Whether he be the sultan of Brunei or some rich man or millionaire. Why should I stretch my hands? Why should I beg from him? Where did he get his wealth? He also is in need of Allah. We are all in need of Allah. Why not I stretch my hand straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So when a murid and a believer can understand this ayah and he lives every day not being in need of anyone or anything like my principal, my late principal, my late sheikh and spiritual mentor, Maulana Abu Saud, rahimahullah, the father who was the father of Mufti Ashraf, Hafidahullah, he told me, he says, once he told me, he says that I do not ask people for anything. He says sometimes we need funds for the madrasa. Sometimes we need money. He says I stretch my hands in dua. And when I finish and I'm walking down the stairs, walking down the stairwell, the steps, somebody is waiting there with an envelope and he gives it to me. It goes back to the hadith when the Prophet wasallam said, وَإِذَا سَعَلْتَ That if you ask, فَاسْأَلِ Ask from Allah. وَإِذَا سْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ When you seek help, seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا سَعَلْتَ When you have to beg and to ask, ask from Allah. وَإِذَا سْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ And when you need that istiyana, assistance and aid, ask it from Allah. That is why the cousin of the Prophet, Hazrat Ali, كَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَجْهَ The son-in-law of the Prophet who married his daughter, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, the fourth caliph of Islam, he saw a man on the day of Arafah, a day of Arafah begging, and he gave him a few strokes. That on this day, in this place, when everyone is in the, in the plain of Arafah begging before Allah, that's the day of Arafah. And you are begging from people, he gave him some strokes for that. My dear sisters and my dear brothers, the, the gist or the bottom line, or the final call statement is that as we go through life, we will be faced with problems, we'll be faced with, with stress, difficulties, poverty, sickness, and Allah says he's going to test us. But if we can live life with an attitude that hear what? No matter what happens, I want to try to be in the obedience of Allah. I want to try to be like Sheikh Ibrahim bin Adham, who was resting so comfortably and peacefully in the boat because he is at peace with Allah. No matter what happens, I want to try my best to do not go out of the boundaries of obedience into the land or the area of disobedience. I'm going to become dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet alayhi taught us that even if you want a shoelace, make dua for that. Allah likes that. When you beg from people, people begin to dislike you. When you beg from Allah, the more you beg from Allah, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like you. But you know what? We make dua and we want to hurry up Allah. It is called al istirjal fil ijaba. We want to rush Allah. We want to hasten and to hurry up Allah to answer, although He wants it to happen immediately. And we lack patience. And sometimes Allah watches us. And sometimes we are making dua, but we are not full in certain conditions. We need to keep sabr. We need to keep patience. 
So I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give us the reality of this ayah. Ya ayyuhannas, O mankind, O people, whoever you may be, just understand, antumul fuqara ilallah, that you are al fuqara, you are fakir, you are poor, you are dependent upon Allah. Wallahu al ghaniyul hamid, Allah is the one who is rich, and Allah is the one who is praiseworthy. And when we can live like that, then if, uh, if the earth begins to shake and there's an earthquake, we begin to turn to Allah because we are, in, we are dependent upon Allah's mercy. If there's a storm, we turn to Allah because we are in need of Allah. If we are poor, we turn to Allah because we are in need of Allah. If we are sick, we turn to Allah because we are in need of Allah. And we live our lives understanding that we are nothing but slaves of Allah. Living our lives understanding that we are al-ibad, slaves of Allah. And a slave possesses nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing except what his master gives him. If we can live our lives knowing that we are slaves, slaves, even this body is not mine. This life is not mine. This soul is not mine. Allah will take it whenever he wants to. Even your wife, my wife, they don't belong to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them whenever he's ready. Even your child is not your child. Allah takes it whenever he wants. In fact, the word mata, which is referred to goods of this world, Mata or dunya, the goods of this life. As Allah says, Wamal Hayatu Dunya, what is the life of this world? Illa Mata wal Gurur, except goods of deception. So the things of this world they are called Mata, things to to enjoy, things to derive benefit from. They are all goods. But the word mata means that. A time will come when your grasp and power over these things will cease to exist. You will no longer have that grasp and power because they, they will go, they will vanish. Your power, your axe over it is going to vanish. That means mata, as opposed to the things of the accurate. Allah doesn't refer to the, the things of the accurate as mata and goods. No, these things are perpetual. So my sisters, my dear brothers, when this feeling, feeling can come inside of us that I am a fakir, I am a slave of Allah, I am in need of Allah, Allah needs nothing. We need everything from Allah. Whether it doesn't matter what color, what creed or race we belong to, whether I am a prophet, whether I am a wali, a rasul, whether I am rich, whether I am poor, we are still in need of Allah. When that feeling comes, then every day is going to be like a day of Eid. Every moment is going to be like a moment of Eid. Every hour is going to be like an hour of Eid. Every second is going to be like a second of Eid. And this is the meaning of the verse. Alladina amanu. That those who believe and really have Iman. Their hearts find solace and tranquility in the remembrance of Allah. Then Allah says, Allah, which in Arabic is harfut tambi, and harfut tambi means to, to draw one's attention. Allah is saying, Allah, so no, listen well. O oh people, Allah is alerting us. Allah, wake up, O oh people, listen well. It is only by the remembrance of Allah that the hearts become tranquil. The hearts find tranquility and peace. And when that comes, and that dependency, and we understand that we are fakirs, we are beggars, we are fuqara, we are in need of Allah, that is the meaning of the statement which is in Ikmalu Shiyam, Al-Fakru, that Fakr, 
Eid al Muridin is the Eid of the Murids. It is the Eid of the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding and the haqiqat of these words and put the reality into our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. And whenever we are in need, that we would first turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know He's the master. He's the master. He's the controller of the heavens and the earth. وَأَكِرُوا الدَّعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Although I never saw his face so beautiful bestowed with grace